So as I said before, I'm Katie. Um, I'm from British Columbia. I live on Vancouver Island and we definitely get a lot of salmon here. Um, we get pinks, chinook or kings. Um, we get coho, chum, sockeye. Yeah, we get them all. So <laughs> um, like in the picture on my first slide there, that's a pink um, salmon that I caught in a local flow here. Um, so yeah, we can go to the next slide there, Heather. <laughs> Um, okay, correct size of tackle. So it is different um, here on the island. Um, yeah, like in my slide, most salmon you want to use a seven weight rod for. Um, it just helps bring them in so much faster. It helps um, with them reco like recovering. So when you um, do catch and release, they can go back and hopefully continue on their journey. Um, yeah, and that's the one thing, especially fishing in the summer, you don't want to stress them out. So, <laughs> okay, go to the next slide, Heather. <laughs> um, wet hands are best. Oh my God, yes, wet hands are best. So, um, I've, of course, we've all seen it on the internet, social media, people wearing tailing gloves to help with grip. But honestly, they're not helpful for salmon. They will rip the scales off. They take the protective slime off of them that protects them from bacteria and viruses in the water. Um, so anytime you are landing a fish and you want to hold it or get that photo for whatever reason, um, definitely wet your hands before you touch the fish, fish, it'll just, it's just so much nicer for their scales and the protective slime and best way to handle fish in the summer, especially when it's warm. <laughs> All right. So spay leader example. So I always fish, uh, salmon with a skagit head, um, in freshwater, if I'm doing ocean, I'm going to be using a Scandi line, which is a lot longer and lighter. Skagit head's a lot heavier and shorter. So what the Skagit head does, it actually helps project your line out and helps flip over your leader and your fly because you are using usually bigger flies for salmon. Um, I also use a sink tip, like Chris said, just to get down to where they are because in the freshwater, they're rare are they going to come up and hit a dry fly where I am anyways they want to be low in the water where it's cool especially in the summer because we get our salmon from about mid-July all the way until October November so summer they definitely want to be down cooler um I definitely use TAT11 um our rivers aren't huge here so we don't have a huge like super super deep areas that we would need T14 and especially in the summertime, the flows aren't super strong. So you don't need that much weight. You end up either gonna get snagged or you're gonna snag a fish. Um, then also when it comes to your tippet, um, depending what you're fishing for, you would have tippet between 10 pound to 30 pound. And that covers you from small salmon to pinks all the way up to kings. And then we also use um, a non-slip knot. And also I will use a Duncan loop knot and that um, it creates like a little more movement of the fly because it'll sit in a loop and it'll actually like move around a bit. So it looks a little more natural as it's swimming. And then I also recommend 30 pound for your backing and running line because you get a big Chinook on there, you're gonna want something that's gonna be able to handle it so you can bring it in safely. All right, next slide there, Heather. <laughs> oh, large salmon flies, ooh, these are fun. <laughs> Okay, so when I'm fishing for chum, chinook, or coho, those what I would classify as my um, larger salmon, um, I usually fish like an intruder or like a size two to size three hook, like quite, quite big. Um, so <clears throat> when fishing for the larger salmon in the river, they're usually not super hungry, like aggressive in that sense they're more aggressive of territory because they're spawning. They're like, hey, this is my spot. This is where my lady is. This is where my food is. Like I get out of my way, like you're in my spot. So what I usually do when I'm fishing for larger salmon, I'll cast up from where they are. So my sink tip has time to come down and get right into the zone of where they're gonna be biting or where they're gonna be the most aggressive. So that's why usually you would use a big fly, an intruder, and usually you use bright colors like um, for Chinook, I would use, yeah, like white and chartreuse or chartreuse and blue. Um, they really like um, white and silver. I find that for most salmon in my area, like white and silver, like sparkly. 
um, and they don't like heavily dressed flies. So the less like feather and fluff on it, the better. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, so yeah, I think for the biggest thing when it comes to the bigger flies, do not overdress them if you're gonna be if you're gonna be fishing on Vancouver Island because they don't like a bunch of fluff. They just want they just see a little bit and they're like, okay, mine. So <laughs> that's what I would um, recommend for large salmon flies. Okay, we need another one. Pink salmon flies. So pinks are a lot different here on the island. Um, I have fished for pinks in other parts of BC and they like big flies. Here, they want like tiny. We're talking like size eight, size 10 hooks. Um, we usually um, use a pattern, as you can see in the photos there, there's um, pink, uh, pink for pink, which is quite what a lot of people do as a trick. Um, a lot of areas where I fish for pinks, they like this blue color with um, a tungsten bead that's a chartreuse color. And the nice thing about the tungsten bead, it helps get it down even further to where they are and it will help like, you kind of call it like bottom bouncing because you're hitting the rock, like the flies hitting the rocks as it's going along. And so it catches their eye. And, um, but in other places in BC, I've seen people use like um, rabbit, the rabbit tails like leeches and with trailer hooks and everything. And they've had to like strip for them. All the salmon that I've mainly caught here is on the swing. Um, the only time I strip is if, <laughs> um, is in the ocean, um, when they're coming in, they seem to be, want to, that, cause at that point in the ocean, they're still feeding. So they want to see movement. They want to see jerks, but in the river here, you just want to make sure you're right up in the right area so you can swing it right into them. And yeah, that's how I catch most of my salmon is on the swing here on the island in fresh water. Okay, we can go to the next one. Oh, eat local. So we're going to show you how, I'm going to give you some tips on how to harvest your salmon as well, because I've learned some tips and tricks over the years from people, because I've had a lot of struggle doing it myself. So when you catch your salmon, bring it onto the beach or, or um, riverbank, wherever you are that you're allowed to retain fish, depending on your regulations. Um, you want to make sure you bonk the fish hard and firm, like right between the eyes. I know it sounds a little uh, morbid, but um, it's the best way to kill them. It's the quickest way, least painful way. It's just easier that way. And the, another big thing is make sure you bleed out your fish. You leave any blood in there, the meat's going to be horrible. <laughs> it's not gonna taste good. So what I recommend for bleeding out your fish is you just, if you carry a knife with you when you go fishing, highly recommend it. Um, you're just gonna cut the gill plate and then pull the gills out and then you literally just hang it upside down and out it comes. <laughs> um, um, so with a, how you want to start it is with a very sharp knife. If you have a fillet knife that you bring with you because you're going to be harvesting, that's perfect. I, I'm usually not filleting fish when I'm on the river. I'm just gutting them and bringing them home and then doing the rest of that. So um, with a sharp knife, you want to start sort of like at the fish's anus bum area. And you want to cut a straight line right up until the gill plate because there will be a hard part like the gills are here there's going to be a hard cartilage part here by their throat so you want to cut all the way up until that hard part and then you just but you don't want to go too deep because there is vital organs in there if you nick like the stomach or anything like that you could spoil your meat as well so um then you're going to go in go up to where that hard part is on their neck and you're going to grab right up in there and pull down. And everything should come out fairly easily, um, depending how big the fish is. Obviously, the smaller the fish, the easier it is gonna be less to pull out than a large fish. Um, a spoon is gonna be your best tool when harvesting a fish. Um, it just helps scrape out all any of the gunky stuff. And then there's also, um, along the fish's back, when you cut them open along their spine, there's a thing called a bloodline. And this is a main bloodline that goes across the whole fish. So you want to make sure you re remove that as well because there is blood in it. And you, like I said, you don't want any of the blood um, getting on any of the flesh because it will ruin the taste of it. Um, oh yes, rinse your fish out in the river. Do not leave gunk piles beside you on the riverbank or the beach or whatever, rinse it out there rinse it out in the river because um, where I live we have um, we get a lot of bears um, 
mainly black bears. We have the few grizzlies up at the northern part of the island, but I usually don't fish up in that area. Um, so yeah, bears can smell blood from kilometers away. And so they can smell if you have a fresh kill because there's going to be blood, obviously, and guts. So best rinse them out in the river, throw your gut pile into the river. It's going to help with other um, fish in the river. So I've seen many times when I've thrown, excuse me, eggs or guts into the river. Um, I've had steelhead come up and take the eggs. And I've seen other little trout come up and eat the eggs and um, and the gut pile as well to, for nutrients. So it helps, it helps every fishery if you just throw it in there, unless in your area you're allowed to keep the row and cure it for fishing. Here, unfortunately, we have a ban on row. Um, also be mindful if a bear walks up on you while you are um, harvesting, um, I highly recommend to give the bear space. And if they take your catch, they take your catch. Like they win. It's their home. You got to respect that this is what they, this is what nature does for them. This is their, the fish are here for them. Um, so I, I always be respectful. Luckily I've never had it happen to me. Um, but I have had friends fishing and they've hooked into a fish and a bear comes coming through the river and takes it off of their line. So best thing is just play it safe especially when you are harvesting keep your gut pile away from you keep it down river um and i think that's about it when it comes to harvesting and then okay here's one of my uh, pink salmon from last year that was definitely a bigger one but like i said those little those pink salmon they just want itty bitty bitty here um so i usually recommend using eight weight rod and eight weight floating line um, I have caught Chinook on a three weight nymph rod. Um, that was a lot of fun. It took a really long time to get him in and I was running up and down, but yeah, like an eight weight rod, it's not going to give you as much as a fight as a three weight rod. Um, so yeah, then I just attach the leader and then I attach the 15 pound mono. So and just a huge thanks to all of you all. So Chris and Katie and to Rachel, um, thank you so much. We're so blessed to have um, you three amazing co-hosts and just, I think United Will Apply is just this amazing community of such rad individuals and you all are a part of that. So just your time, your energy, your knowledge, like, thank you. 